All right, yesterday, Democrats in the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing. Uh, and catch this title, by the way. The name of their hearing was The Continued Assault on Reproductive Freedoms in a Post-Dobbs America. It's an assault. And while Senate Democrats were hoping somehow to convince the American people that Republicans are extreme on the issue of abortion and life, they only showed yet again that they are the ones who are extreme as they are wholeheartedly in support of abortion through all nine months of pregnancy on demand, no questions asked. The position of today's elected Democrats in Congress on abortion is wildly out of step with the American people. The position of the Democrats is not a mainstream position. Indeed, national polling shows roughly 9% of Americans agree with that position. 91% of Americans disagree with the position of every single elected Democrat in this body. Wow. Of course, that was Senator Ted Cruz of Texas uh, at the hearing yesterday. So what else came out at the hearing? Well, here to discuss this and more is Mary Zock. She's the director of uh, at the Center of Human Dignity here at FRC. Mary, thank you so much for joining us again on Washington Watch. Great to see you. Great to see you too, Judy. All right, so what do you make of the Democrats describing uh, the wake of the Dobbs decision as an assault? This is an assault. Yeah, it's really ironic that Democrats use violent terms to describe protecting unborn children when we know that abortion abortion brutally and callously ends the life of an unborn child. Democrats are extreme on this because they believe that it is fine to kill an innocent human being up until the moment of birth. And, and even Democrats haven't even voted to pass legislation protecting an, a, a child after that child is born. Um, so, so we can see that the, the ones who are committing the assault, an actual assault on a human being, here are, in fact, Democrats. Yeah, well said. Well said. I, I think that that hits the nail on the head. And, you know, Democrats unquestionably, clearly are the extreme ones on this issue. Uh, in fact, I want to play a clip here for you and, and get your reaction. But, but this is a clip uh, with Senator Kennedy, uh, John Kennedy, and he, he pointed out how uh, one of the organizations of one of the Democrat witnesses there uh, on their website, it points out that they support abortion at all points of gestation. Uh, and so Kennedy jumped in here with this question. Uh, let's show this clip. And I'd like to get your response. If a healthy mother with a healthy baby wanted to have an abortion the day before uh, uh, birth, and you're, would it be okay with you? Senator, that is not how abortion care works, and it's really dangerous. That rhetoric is really dangerous for the it, people who are It would be okay with you, wouldn't it? That is called labor and delivery, sir. It would be okay with that you, That is called wouldn't. labor and delivery, sir. Wow. So what do you make of that exchange, Mary? Well, it's very interesting that none of the witnesses were willing to come out and say, no, I would not support abortion the day before a, a a healthy mother with a healthy baby is due to deliver. And and all of them said the same thing. Both of them said the same thing. They said, that's not how abortion works. Well, I would love for them to describe for the American people how abortion does work, because how it works is it tears apart an unborn child, a defenseless, innocent, unborn child. And that's what the American people need to know about the Democrat position. They could not refute the fact that they support abortion of a healthy baby with a healthy mother the day before that woman is due. Yeah, and the question was not, what is that last day called? Uh, he was not asking, is it called labor and delivery? He was asking, would you support the abortion of that baby one day beforehand? And they, like you brought up, they did, did not refuse, they, they refused to answer the question and just say, oh, that's called labor and delivery. Well, that, that was not the question. And they refused to answer what you were saying here and many others, that they absolutely support abortion all, way, all the way up to the point of birth. Now, as we all know, the Democrats have many allies, pro-abortion allies, but one of those is the Guttmacher Institute. 
And the legacy media is thrilled, frankly, to be reporting uh, recently uh, a, a report from Guttmacher where they are bragging that there were uh, more than a million abortions in 2023. That is the highest number of abortions uh, in over a decade, uh, a 10 percent jump over 2020. And it just seems unthinkable to me that they are thrilled, elated, celebrating the fact that abortions are up. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this Guttmacher report? I think for too long, we have allowed people to hide behind the, what has become a euphemism, and that is abortion. Abortion, people, people don't actually think of what that actually is. It's the brutal ending of a human being's life. And imagine if we had headlines that were, that were celebrating the death of the increased number of deaths through the brutal murder of unborn children. Imagine if we had headlines celebrating that. Americans would be outraged. But because we use the term abortion, people are, are able, Democrats are able to get away with this. They're able to act as if this is a positive thing. Nothing about abortion is good. And, and certainly we need to work about at fixing the circumstances that have led over a million women to think that this was their solution. But we also have to call abortion what it is. And we can't let Democrats act like this is some fix all to the problems of the world. Yeah, we can't let them act as though this is a fix all, nor can we allow them to point the finger at us who support life and, and have them say we're extreme. Since when has death not been considered an extreme position? Uh, and, and yet, somehow, those of us who stand for life these days in this political environment are looked upon as the extremist. The Washington Times came out, speaking of this whole Guttmacher Institute report and all that, that they're coming out with. Also, and I'd love to get your response to this, they are— the, the, the big fear these days is the shift from— uh, procedural medical abortions, as bad as that is, to now the use of abortion pills. This is, uh, Guttmacher reported that now over uh, two-thirds of abortions are taking place by the pill, where women are taking these at home, which brings severe risk of health to their own lives, as well as ending the life of the baby. What What is your take on the drastic increase of the use of abortion pills in spite of the fact that many states have restrictions on these pills or still going around all these restrictions. It looks like just an enormous mess that's being created both physically and legally. It really is an enormous mess and there's so many things to address here. First off, we know that every single abortion is tragic because every abortion ends the life of an unborn child. But, but the use of the abortion drug is especially egregious because we know that the abortion drug is four times as dangerous as surgical abortion for the mother. And, and so we have women who are receiving these abortion, this abortion drug, mifepristone, through the mail, and, and they're taking this drug alone in their bathroom, and then, and then they're hemorrhaging. And then they have uncontrolled bleeding where they don't know, is it too much or is this natural? They don't know what is about to happen to their body because they're not doctors. They weren't supposed to know. We have women who have ectopic pregnancies that go undiagnosed, and then, and then those women have serious complications because of it. Or women who never received a Rogamp shot, and, and then their future pregnancies are in jeopardy because no abortionist saw them in person to tell them, hey, you actually need this. So we have the abortion industry putting women's lives at risk, all so that they can make more money. And, and that's exactly what they're doing with the abortion drug. They're, they're shipping it across state lines to pro-life states, and, and in direct violation of those states' rights to protect unborn children. And they're doing all of this just to make more money. So money is the driving force behind those pushing the pill, I suppose. What, and that makes sense. I mean, typically for these type of issues, you always follow the money trail and you find it there. 
What do you attribute, though, the increase, the drastic increase in abortions, generally speaking? I mean, we know Mifepristone has been uh, more or less approved since early 2000s, but uh, is is the increase from the, the Biden administration's looser restrictions on abortion, they're pushing for abortion. What is the driving force behind the spike that we're watching? I think it's hard to say exactly what it is. I think it's a number of factors that all go together. We have pro-abortion states that are pushing abortion on women, that are telling, telling women, abortion is your only solution. We have a culture where men are not taking responsibility for their actions, and, and there's not a willingness to stand up and stand with the mother of their unborn child and, and defend that life. And we have the chemical abortion drug that the abortion industry says is just as easy as taking a Tylenol. It's not. It's very different from a Tylenol. You have a significantly increased chance of entering the emergency room, which is not something that someone who takes a Tylenol has. And, and we know that the abortion industry tells women it will just be like a heavy period. It will be natural. And then we know countless women end up delivering their unborn baby that's clearly recognizable as a baby into the toilet. And their hearts are broken forever because they didn't realize that was what was about to happen. Wow. This increase is tragic, and we really can't state that enough. Wow. Well, you know, there's never a bad time, Mary, to remind our audience of the dangers of the abortion pill. You spoke to some of them uh, just now. What are some of the other dangerous, serious health risks involved with the abortion pill? Well, we know that there's an increased risk of an ectopic pregnancy going undiagnosed, an increased risk of hemorrhage of retained fetal parts. The further along in a woman's pregnancy that she is, the, the higher likelihood that, that part of her, her baby, part of the placenta or the tissue that's there won't exit her body with the abortion drug use. So, so we know there is that danger, but we also can't forget about the likelihood of intimate partner violence with the use of the abortion drug. There's a story, a tragic story that just occurred, the, the hearing for it just occurred in Texas where um, a mother, a, a wife found out she was pregnant and, and her husband um, began to try to try to kill her their unborn child with the abortion drug by putting this substance in in her drinking water. Um, and thankfully, this mother was was courageous and brave in defending her unborn baby, and and she protected that child's life. But that's just one instance. And how many traffickers we have? We have a huge issue at the border. How many traffickers are using the abortion drug? How many, how many women who are in abusive situations have, have their abuser using that abortion drug? Those are things that we don't know the answer to, but we know that it is very, very easy for, for an abuser to do. Well, well, we've only got uh, a little over a minute or so left here, Mary, but uh, I know Senator Duckworth has a bill that was being known as the IVF bill. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit about what, what this bill really is doing? Yeah, calling this the IVF bill, that's just Senator Duckworth taking advantage of a, a moment in in the in political history where the Alabama Supreme Court called embryos human beings and persons, which they are. But what this bill really does is is it it would legalize the the ex experimentation to create three parent embryos. It would legalize chimeras, human cloning. These are th these are the the things that the American people do not want, that the left is taking this opportunity and, and saying, well, hey, this is just about IVF. It's not about IVF. It's about cloning. It's about chimeras. It's about three parent embryos and designer babies. Well, thank you so much, Mary Zaki. You do a spectacular job keeping us informed as to what's taking place in this whole battle for life and uh, the work that you do as director of the Center of Human Dignity here at FRC. We are grateful deeply. Thank you for joining us on Washington Watch.